up guys, Seth Fighter here. Um, I did a video a couple years back with Wired to Fish, breaking down smallmouth baits and techniques by water temperature from late summer into the winter period. We're gonna do the same thing today, but with largemouth fishing. This is gonna be tailed, tailored more to northern largemouth than southern, a little bit different, but uh, another cool thing we got going on, we're gonna do a shop with Seth giveaway at omniafishing.com. I'm gonna be your personal shopper. Go ahead, sign up for that. Chance to win, you get to bring a buddy, and I'll help you pick out all the stuff tailored to your neck of the woods. But for this specific video, we're gonna be talking about northern largemouth. And uh, before we go any further, if you're going to give me one rod, reel, bait to fish in the fall for northern largemouth, it's going to be a flipping jig for me. This is a, it's going to be half, three eighths to five eighths ounce stealth fighter outcast tackle with, uh, I got a Z-Man chunk on here right now. The trailer is going to change up a little bit with water temp. That's going to be more towards the, the colder end of the thing. But if you're going to give me one combo to fish with in the fall for northern largemouth, it's going to be flipping a jig. I can swim it too, super versatile, and the type of cover I'm fishing in the fall is really suited well for a jig. This happens to be it's just a seven foot medium heavy to two elite, got an 85 zillion on there, 30 pound suffix 832, 20 pound fluorocarbon leader. But I'll start from late summer all the way to the bitter end. There's only a couple baits you can get bit on in the bitter end. Uh, it's a, I mean, a jerk bait would be in there too, but realistically, a chatter bait and a flipping jig all the way to ice up. Um, something about those couple baits. And another thing about a lot of baits you'll notice, they tend to be a little bulkier. Um, I notice in the fall, fish tend to like a bigger meal. That's another reason why I go with a jig nine times out of ten. Um, definitely different scenarios for each thing, but jig super versatile. I can fish boat docks lay down, shallow vegetation, mid-range vegetation, um, basically everything I'm gonna be targeting, lay downs, overhangs, stuff like that. It, it becomes, fall fishing for me is real visual. It's, this isn't summertime, staring at your graph, watching live, side scanning, none of that. For me, I am on the bank and um, talking water temps and going down. You start out late summer, you're still gonna have quite a few fish deep. Um, and you know, late summer I'm calling, the water's still in the 70s, you know, there's gonna be fish shallow, there's gonna be fish deep. As we start to get into those 60s, and especially up north, there's, there's something magical about the first frost. That first real cold night, you'll see the shallow waters just come alive. All of a sudden there'll be shiners and stuff that hasn't been there all year, up in a foot of water. And that, uh, everything I do that time of year is gonna be, I would say, eight foot or less for fall fishing and realistically, majority of it's gonna be four foot and less. Um, I'll come back to the jig a little bit, but um, and if you're only gonna give me two rods, I'm taking a Texas rig and a jig. I, I'm more of a dauber, putting stuff around cover, fishing it. Now there's some moving baits that do well in the fall. Um, a frog's a great way, kind of really that late summer, early fall period. A frog is a really good way to fish. Um, a lot of pads, vegetation, shallow vegetation, reeds, um, overhangs, boat docks like that, super weedless. I can skip it around, uh, nothing fancy. Seven foot medium heavy, eight to one reel, 30 pound braid. Um, just the kind of rod you can do everything with. A little stiffer than the one I flipped the jig on, but most purposes the same rod. But um, a frog, this is a Terminator junior walking frog. I'll fish this a lot more in your like real grassy natural lakes, your rice lakes, your reeds, your pads. I do a lot more fishing with a frog there than I do on your, you know, milfoil, coontail, dock style lakes. But um, fish go shallow in the fall when it gets cold. This is going to be, I'm going to say you're definitely this is summer bait. So summer temps all the way down to, uh, and. Man, I've seen frog fish get caught in some really cold water, but general rule of thumb, I'm gonna say you're down to 50, low 50s on a frog. I've seen fish bite top waters in 40, but realistically, this is gonna be your 65 to 55 bait for me. Usually pads, a lot of fish will go to pads in the fall. It's usually where I'm throwing a frog that time of year. And that's a natural clear lake. Um, 
when you get in a dirty water lake that doesn't have a lot of vegetation, a square bill gets really hard to beat. Those fish will run to that shallow rock, those riprap banks, hard bottom banks, lay down, stuff like that. I can do all that with a square bill, mixing a jig, but um, that's another bait that'll go down in the water temp, but I don't, that kind of bite really doesn't exist till it gets a bit colder. So for me, really, this is gonna be more of a high 50s to high 40s bait. And just covering a ton of water, going down, looking for hard bank, hard cover, lay downs, rip wrap, just making parallel cast, cranking it down there. Um, I got a glass cranking rod. I have it on eight to one right now. I was fishing the river, but normally it'd be a seven to one. Probably 12 pound fluorocarbon. And that's really, I don't do well cranking on the clear water lakes. There's some inside grass line stuff that happens, but for the most part, if, if I'm fishing dirty water, it's gonna be a crankbait and a jig. Um, with moving baits, we'll keep her going. Chatter bait, Z-Man chatter bait, razor shad on there. It's a 7-4 glass, 7-1, 20, 15 to 20 pound line, depending on the depth I'm getting. It's gonna be more of a grassier lake and rocks have done well fishing, you know, dirty water, shallow rock piles with a chatter bait real late in the fall. This one, for some reason, they, they don't seem to quit biting it as the water temp goes down. I wouldn't say it's as strong on the higher end of the water temps, like, in the 70s, 60s, but when I get into the 50s, all the way down to literally the last day I went fishing in Minnesota last year, which was in November, I caught him on a chatterbait. Water was in the low 40s. I was still getting bit on this. There's something about a chatterbait. Not sure what it is, but I'm slow crawling it on the bottom. You know, rocks eight foot or less. Um, last little bits of weeds, outside weed edge, slow cranking. I tend to fish a three quarter more in the fall. Whereas in the spring, I, I fish a half ounce a lot. I usually want to keep it up on top of the grass, the shallower flats. This is kind of a outer realm bait for me. Um, that time of year, catches big ones and gets bit to the bitter end. Why, I don't know. The last moving bait I'm gonna throw is gonna be a swim jig. For me, this is gonna be more of a stained to clear water lakes um, and vegetation, shallow vegetation, reeds, milfoil. You can swim around boat docks going down the bank pads. For me, I can do a lot of the same stuff with a flipping jig, so I don't typically have a swim jig tied on near as much, but this is a 3 8 outcast tackle. Uh, heavy cover swim jig. I got a Z-Man Helicross on there. Same old seven foot medium heavy, eight to five, 30 pound braid, 20 pound leader. For me, a swim jig, probably the best bite's either gonna be in the shallow grass or inside weed lines is where I really do the most damage on a swim jig. You can catch them around boat docks as well. But And these two are gonna go hand in hand. It's a Texas rig. Um, two versions of it though. Um, something I notice about it, and this one you'll notice the, the shallow bite starts to get really good. Like late August, realistically more mid-September, a lot of our grass will start pulling loose from the bottom. Your eelgrass is gonna die off, just junk weeds. It really does not matter what it was. A lot of the stuff breaks loose and starts floating. And one of the one of the best patterns that time of year, this tends to be in what I consider when the turnover starts happening, that water's kind of 60 to mid 50s, you're gonna notice a lot of floating vegetation in the northern lakes. Um, and anywhere that blows into will be really good. It forms mats um, and shallow mats at that you know foot two foot um sometimes three four foot if they're around some docks and stuff but it's something i really like is either a nice riprap bank that it's blown into or you got a little quick depth change you know you got a foot of water right next to the bank or something like this a little bit of reeds out here you'll get clumps of floated vegetation that blows into those reeds and when i'm talking about you know you have that first frost and everything goes shallow and then when you're starting to get in a turnover process happening, I feel like even more goes shallow and they still want heavy cover. You know, a lot of these lakes are just full of grass, just massive grass flats everywhere. All that stuff's starting to die. The deeper grass is gonna grow up, you know, especially the milfoil, all that stuff that was 10, 12 beautiful topped out milfoil, that edge starts creeping up into that six, eight feet and all the eelgrass is letting loose and everything's blowing into banks. Um, a heavy Texas rig, anywhere from you don't, need, don't typically need crazy heavy weight in that stuff. Three quarter usually gets the job done. I got an ounce and a quarter on here now, but it's a seven nine heavy action punching rod, straight braid, straight shank, 
We got a little palmetto bug on there. Doesn't really much matter when you're dropping it in there. That's gonna be an instantaneous thing, but that's a really good pattern I look for, especially in around that 55 degree water mark. Uh, it could be gin clear water like this, sand, a little bank, and a, just a you know a clump of a mat, grass mat this wide growing out off the bank or blown into the bank, and you can have amazing days punching that stuff. There's not much to it. Dive it in there, a couple hops, reel it in, and go and just cover water. They're real situational though, because they're floating. You know, you can have a beautiful stretch of it one day and the wind switch and it's all gone the next day, but you should be able to find it wherever it's blowing into. But that's one of my favorite patterns. Probably the only time I go real heavy in the fall. Um, then going back to a regular Texas rig, I, I definitely fish this more throughout the fall than a, the punch rig, but this is gonna be early, like in the summer, this is still going, flipping grass, you know, milfoil, 10 foot and then once it starts to get cold those fish will shallow up and they'll get a little more spread out you'll start catching them good in like clumpy six foot milfoil four foot milfoil clumps um just because everything's dying off and recessing so those fish are moving shallower following with it and i'll fish docks a lot with this too um as far as the jig goes on docks i'm gonna fish those on cleaner docks or most likely dirty water docks with some stain or really muddy water, one of the two. But if I get in an area where I'm fishing clear water docks and there's a lot of grass underneath them, I'm gonna fish a Texas rig. It just goes through a lot cleaner and a tube seems really hard to beat. Something in the 5 16 3 eighths range. That's a 4 out, uh, VMC extra wide gap ringed hook. 3 a ounce tungsten sinker, similar setup. 7-3 medium heavy, 30 pound braid, eight to one, 20 pound leader. Basic, you could do it with a seven foot medium heavy. Same deal, but this is another bait I'll keep in my hand. Like, like I said, if I was only gonna get two baits all fall, it'd be a Texas rig and a jig. This Another thing, you can be real opportunistic in the fall. Patterns aren't as rock solid as they are in the spring or the summer. Fishing tends to get junky, not necessarily on the baits you catch them on, but the types of cover. Like in the fall, really, I'm just burning bank and just being opportunistic. Um, you know, if I'm going down the bank and there's a willow tree hanging out, I'm going to skip like any piece of cover. You got to think like this lake all summer has just been full of grass. There's been places for them to live everywhere. All of a sudden this starts, stuff starts dying and one twig can hold a bass all of a sudden because there's nothing else in the water. They start pulling docks out of the water. There's less docks, little clumps of shallow vegetation that really wouldn't house anything all summer now are real viable places to pitch a Texas rig around. That's something you can put in your hand, just go down the bank, you see a little clump of pads flip in there, a little clump of reeds flip in there, lay down, an overhang, a dock, um, a swim platform, whatever you come across down the bank, you can drop a bait next to it. Texas rig goes through everything. Um, but I will say at the bottom end of the spectrum on the water temp, I rarely pick up a Texas rig. Once we get into the low 50s, upper 40s, I'll flip a jig in all those same places, regardless of water clarity or cover. Just something about the bulkier fall, I think they really like it, prefer it over a Texas rig. And typically when you get, when the water gets that far down in temperature, there's not a lot of vegetation targets left anymore. You're pretty much flipping wood and lay downs. Um, but a Texas rig, super versatile. I like it on the higher end of the spectrum. Basically down mid 50s and up, I'm more likely to reach for a Texas rig than a jig, regardless of the variables I'm facing that day. And the last and most important one, like I said at the beginning of this video, if you gave me one, this is the only one I want. I'll, I'll go through the weight size a little bit. Um, typically at the warmer end of the spectrum, you know, low 70s, to low 60s, I'm probably flipping a 5 a ounce jig. Once we get in the low 60s to low 50s, even into the 40s, I, I still like a half ounce jig. And like maybe the last few days I went out in the year, I will go down to that 3 a ounce size just to let um, the jig fall a little bit slower. If I'm, you know, upper 40s, I'll probably fish a 3 a but more likely a 5 a and half. And then the trailer, the trailer's probably more important if not equally as important as the weight um, when I'm in the you know 70 degree range I want a lot of action think uh, 
a flapping craw, a lot of action, you know, like a turbo craws or a billy goat, something kicking a lot. And then there's not really an exact science to it, but once I start getting down into the mid 60s, then I'm gonna wanna start taking action away from the trailer. And down to the better end, just a regular chunk like that. No action really, just a nice profile, glides real nice. Um, doesn't really do a whole lot on the fall. Seems to catch a lot more fish when the water temp gets down, especially, you know, mid 60s and less. I'm gonna go to more of a straight chunk and fish that all the way to the bitter end. And you know, the higher the water temp, obviously in the summer, like 70s plus 80s, I want a lot of action as that temp goes down. Then I'll go from a, you know, a turbo craw to a billy goat, where I got a little subtle action. Then I'll go from a billy goat to a chunk. And that, that's really the most important thing with the, with the jig. And well, the reason I say I like probably a jig the best out of anything, the only thing I can't really do with a jig is punch those shallow mats. I can, I can fish any other cover I come to. Going down the bank with a jig, even if it's like long cast, I can still swim this just like you would a swim jig and get that rod tip up, shaking it. It's so versatile. To me, when I think fall fishing, I think flipping a jig. That's what comes to my mind. That's how I've had the most success. You catch big fish that time of year. In the fall, you don't even typically get the amount of bites you do in the spring, but as far as guys in the North Country, if you got a closed bass season where you don't get to experience that pre-spawn period, all the biggest bass I've ever caught in, you know, New York, Wisconsin, Minnesota, that northern area, they've come in October. Um, first couple weeks to mid-October seems like the best time to go out and catch, you know, like a six pound largemouth, seven pound largemouth, or even just fives. It seems like the bites you get in the fall are, are the right quality. You don't get as many of them, but I kind of like fishing that way. If I can lock a jig in my hand all day and catch a dozen fish, and you know, five of them are great big ones, that's a perfect day on the water to me and it's you know all the jet skiers and wake porters are gone it's an awesome time of year to fish a lot less fishing pressure and i think that realistically for guys in the north country that's your with the exception of pre-spawn that's what really when you're going to catch your biggest bass all year they're fattening back up for winter they're feeding their you know these bass are going to go dormant for four or five months for the most part i mean you might catch a couple ice fishing but they really shut down a lot so that little that where i'm from in minnesota that First to third week of October is hands down the best big fish time of year to catch large mouse. It seems like for some reason once you start getting into November, um, I don't really catch a lot of big ones anymore. It kind of tapers off, but that that period right there, it's you know turnover started. You're looking at water in the um, upper 50s to upper 40s. I think's the best time of the year to catch a great big buckethead up north and. You know, those are my baits, and like, like I said, normally when I'm out fall fishing, it's real simple. I got, you know, three or four rods on the deck at most, depending on what lake I'm on. A lot of dobbing, a little bit of winding, and uh, bulkier baits, tubes, jigs, chatter baits, frogs, fat square bills. Um, you know, really keen on them. They're really eating bluegills and crawdads. That's really their main forage up here. So everything, you know, I would, depending on water color, I will do a lot of the black and blue stuff in the dirty water, but as far as the stain and clear stuff go, everything's everything's a variation of green pumpkin. really resembles a bluegill, minus the crankbait. I got a shad color one on there. I'd probably throw up, honestly throw up, you know, if I'm in real dirty water in the fall, like a demon color, um, something real orange, or if it's a little more natural, maybe like a brown or crawdad, I don't typically throw a a shad color one on, but that's what I had tied on. So I typically, everything I'm throwing, some variation of brown or black, um, really trying to match what they're eating on. Bulky, compact baits, and you know, really versatile baits, stuff I can throw pretty much anywhere. And 